I'm so tired of these women that are five sixes at best saying how everybody's trying to sleep with them. Oh my God. Ma'am. Oh, she's so, she's so lost. Oh, this poor lost retired lamb. Oh, it's like watching a, a dying sheep bleed through a corn maze for the final moments of its life. Oh, you poor thing. You need a shepherd. You need, you need a hospice nurse. Just pick me things is, uh, you know, mass producing content at this point. She's just on a roll. It, it's insane, really. It's like what happens when a terminal illness is at like the final stage and it begins rapidly progressing. That's kind of like how her channel feels right now. This video is called Women Manipulate Your Language. She's at a whiteboard, as you can see. So not only are we going to uh, be able to really fully embrace her infinite wisdom, because let's be honest, it is, it's unfathomable, the depths of her knowledge. Now, not only do we get to hear that, but we also get demonstrations. Not only is, is she a genius, but she appears to be a modern day Picasso as well, because this art is some of the most stunning and realistic stuff I've ever actually witnessed. So she's just a talented, skilled person all around, full circle, man. If you wanna go in the guys' spaces, if you wanna go into the bars, if you wanna go into work, if you wanna go into all these men's spaces, I, I have no problem with that. But I'm sorry, I, I know I have to pause it so frequently because there's so much dumb shit that's happening so quickly. Why is a bar and work the men's spaces? Some career fields are definitely dominated by men, but are, are we really just gonna do the whole like, women go back to the kitchen thing? What I do have a problem with is you going into the men's spaces and then whining about the way men talk and suing them later. What up guys? Well what do you mean whining about how men talk? <laughs> oh no, dude. This is gonna be the, come on, boys are just being boys, you know? Every guy here and there, you know, sexually harasses a woman. Every alpha male's done it. What alpha male passes by a woman with a nice rack and a fat ass and doesn't go out of his way to let her know? You know, maybe even give her a little slap on the ass. Damn these fucking woke women and suing us good men. Ugh. Just trying to be gentlemanly. Welcome to the Just Curly Things YouTube channel and welcome to my whiteboard series. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell the way you're- Can you make your audio any better, Pearl? Because it sounds like it's like coming from the back of my speaker. It sounds very weird. You're gonna be notified of my daily videos. Like the video on your way in. No. Let's get started. Oh yeah, that reminds me I need to dislike it. Thank you, Pearl, for reminding me. So today, I wanna to talk about how women police language to the point that we cannot communicate anymore. So, just something I noticed. So, Please, I'm so women curious. complain. So this is, this could be a series called Women Complaining Again. Now. Okay. Um, people in general tend to complain a pretty good deal. Are there any valid reasons to complain, Pearl? Do you think? Don't you think sometimes it's okay to complain about things? Sometimes things warrant complaining. And also you spelled women wrong. You spelled woman. Woman complain again. That should, that should be the name of your channel. <laughs> Bro, that should be your channel. Woman complain again. Yes. Guys, just as a prerequisite, this is not me saying I am better than any woman. This is not me, you know, trying to put women down, but Rather, to really point out what our true nature is. And that is to complain and just never be happy. <laughs> if left. Come on, dude, you can't. This is even worse than the Christians when they're like, listen guys, I am very loving of all people, including especially even the gays, okay? I love all people. I just simply believe that gay people are sinners living in sin and are condemned to go to hell for all of their rest of eternity where they will burn and suffer forever because God thinks that they are disgusting and are defiled and really worthy of being stoned, at least according to Leviticus. But hey, hate the sin, love the sinner. This is the exact same crap. I'm not putting women down or anything, okay guys? I'm just saying women's true nature is that we can never be happy, we're always complaining, we're really dumb, uh, but I'm not putting us down or anything. I'm just saying our true nature is that we are like lower than men. But I'm not saying I'm putting us down. I'm more, think of it like I'm putting women lower than men, you know? Like she's just, she's saying she's not doing the thing that she then goes on to do. Unchecked. 
That's, that's the key if left unchecked. So what I noticed in the space is women will interpret things emotionally before logically. So what I've noticed is phrases like, and I mind you, I used to do this at one point, and then I realized, so when men communicate, they really communicate to get the point across. So oftentimes women will say it's how you say it in your tone. So if I say, um, again, how you say things and the tone in which you say things is literally a crucial part of communicating. Okay. Yeah. That can matter. Your, your partner or someone was like, yeah, babe, I, I really fucking love you. Okay. Tonight. I can't wait to just take you out for dinner. Okay. We're going to have a great time then. Ugh, fine. It's going to be great. Okay. What? I didn't say anything wrong. Did I? Huh? What's the matter? Doesn't it matter how I'm saying it? The tone in which you say things, Pearl, are you this fucking retarded? I know you are, but come on. Can you at least try? And even more so, it's critical for uh, raising children. Kids pick up very much on how you say it and the tone in which you say things. That's not just for when women talk. That's for kids. For how kids pick up on the tone of things. Are you a, Do you want to be a good alpha Chad dad? Then it does matter how you say it in your tone. Okay? So don't just dismiss this as the woman thing. Look at this as maybe this is something that right now women focus on a little more than men, but maybe it's something valuable that men could focus on sometimes too. If I say that, oh, sorry guys. If I, wait, 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 I'm going to be a better swear. All right. If I say, if I say that lady is the way the men will, and if she's right there, if I say. Well, are you talking about at the workplace still, or I guess at the bar also? Damn women complaining about being insulted and called fat at their job. Darn those women, man. It's part of an everyday occurrence at a corporate professional office to walk in and be mocked for your weight and the way you look. This is just normal. Darn women. Say you're fat. The way the men will process it is they'll look and they'll say, is she fat? And the way the women will process it is it's how you say it. Don't say it like that in your tone. Now, why do I think that No, it's actually kind of both, right? Like, so you probably just shouldn't call somebody fat in, in, in a workplace or in general. Like, it's probably not a good idea. That's just called having like good social etiquette. Not calling someone fat is just part of like being a functioning human being. But again, that's way too much to expect from Pearl, who at this point I'm almost convinced is actually just a chimpanzee wearing makeup because that's about where her brain is at. This is a feminine thing. Why don't men do this too? And yes, they do, but typically it's for women. So now when also, you- Also just pearly things looks kind of fat. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that too bluntly? Did it, did it bother her how I said that? Seriously, this shirt looks awful on you, Pearl. It actually looks like you have like a, like a muffin top popping out of each side. Just saying, this woman's fat. This lady is fat here, okay? You go into a guy's locker room. Now I've never been in a guy's locker room, but there's a reason we have phrases like locker room talk. Because I think if women heard the way that men talk in a locker room, a lot of us would go home crying. We can't take it. We're not meant to communicate like that. No, it's that what's called locker room talk is oftentimes incredibly demeaning and disgusting, degrading talk about women. It's like she doesn't realize that this kind of stuff doesn't exist in a vacuum. She doesn't realize that that talk in the locker room can sometimes play a role in the behavior outside of the locker room. She doesn't understand that really pervy and objectifying talk about women all the time with your bros and getting praise and acclamation from other dudes for putting women down and treating them like objects, that can influence how that man is going to treat women outside of the locker room. How he will think about women and talk about women outside of the locker room, Pearl. It's not that women aren't meant to communicate like that. It's that it's unhealthy for human beings to communicate like that and talk about other people like that. You stupid fucking ape. But when you go into a woman's locker room, now it might be different than how we talk in public. But I mean, there's a reason women will call each other fake instead of saying things to their faces. So what does that say? This is a feminine imperative. This is a feminine point of view. And the problem- I wonder if any of that has to do with a big social attitude that women need to be a little bit more agreeable and polite and just kind of go with the flow, you know? And that's that, okay? So maybe that kind of contributes to, to women on average being more likely to sort of, well, put on a polite and kind face, but then let their true feelings known later. Maybe if we socialized people a little differently, then we wouldn't see this same thing happening, Pearl. You ever think about that? Or no, do you think it's cause, cause my vagina and that's it? Like, what, what do you think is going on here? With men nowadays is they've been taught to always think about the woman's point of view. They went to school where they were taught to think about the woman's point of view. They're either in single mother homes or they have a father that always thought about the woman's point of view, right? And that's, how do we see this in society? What? 
always thought about the woman's point of view. Ah, yes. As we all know, those damn estrogen-filled femoids always have their point of view that one plus one equals two. Oh, the stupid fucking femoid viewpoint. Goddamn woman opinion. <sighs> Society. We have happy wife, happy life. It's cheaper to keep, or even the idea of a man cave where the woman has the whole house and the man has his little cave in the basement. And even just the reputation of marriage. No, it's you know? not that a woman has the whole house. It's that they have the whole house, but the one room is where he can just do whatever he wants that's dedicated to him himself. When you have an entire fucking house, the whole house is kind of your place, you know? You, you could go sit in the living room, but if you want a little place that you can go away and be left alone and drink a beer or something, then there you go. Now we have phrases like women, you can't live with them, you can't live without them, right? Indicating that maybe we're not the easiest to deal with. So they- <laughs> Dude, come on. They say the same thing about men. It's not easy always to get along with people. She's literally using boomer slogans. The boomer bumper sticker is her argument right now, guys. Fuck stats, okay? Fuck anything else. She's, she's the rational one, okay? Notice, by the way, this very not fat woman who's also very not emotional, using much ration and much reason. Notice that her big, bold argument here is a bumper sticker that you'll read on a fucking 1989 Ford pickup truck. Workforce, <laughs> and in any industry that women go into, is the men will be working, they'll be doing their thing in either the gym, the workplace or whatever. They'll have all these male spaces. It used to be bars, gyms, and the women will want the attention from the men. They'll think- Bars and gyms? Don't guys go to bars to pick up on women? Oh, that's what I want, man. Less women at bars. That's what every guy wants. Every guy I talk to actually is complaining about how I used to be able to go into the bar and it was nothing but a big old sausage party, man. Now I walk in and there's fucking women that I kind of want to talk to. Ugh. Hunter, you are funny and smart and totally not a cuck. Lindsay, you are uh, totally very funny and also have a very loving father who adores you and is proud of you. And the women will want the attention from the men. They'll think, huh, I need that attention from those men. So they got to figure out a way in. And once the women get into the space, then they go in and say, it's how you say it. I don't like your tone. And then they establish H, the dreaded HR. Because think about it, guys. Are, are men really going to... Are they gonna develop HR? Are the men really suing people? Are the men going to sue each other for sexually harassing women in the workplace? Maybe not? <laughs> what? Is this men's nature? Guys, okay, listen, the female nature is to complain about being sexually harassed, okay? The male nature is to sexually harass. I'm just speaking facts, bro, okay? It's not sexual harassment if I couldn't help it, yo. I just can't believe that she's actually shitting on the idea of HR, having a program within your job that ensures respect of their employees and ensures that people aren't being discriminated against or harassed or sexually harassed within a workplace. Does she not realize that without HR, it would be a nightmare for virtually any massive corporation? Do you think men never go to HR? Sources and lawsuits, it tends to be more of a woman thing. So yeah, that's really the, I wanna show you guys broken down. So what we have is, so what we have is the men have a space where they can hang out. Then the women, they say, I want in. So then the keep in mind, the spaces that men have to hang out are bars, which I never knew that was only a male place working, which is not just a male thing and the gym. Cause we all know how you just shat on. You can't call people fat cause of the darn femoids. And now you're shitting on women also going to the gym. Let's also point that out. She's whining she can't call people fat. She's whining that women complain when called fat. She is shitting on women for trying to go to the gym because the gym is supposed to be the men's space. When I go to the gym, I just want to be surrounded by some sweaty men, dude. Ugh. The men say, fine, Susie, you can come in. Now this applies to bars, this applies to work, and this applies to really anything. So we got the guys. The next step is whining. Okay, so then the women, <clears throat> will complain. And then uh, there's typical things. So they'll whine, they'll say, everybody's trying to F me, even though half the time Susie's half naked too, or- uh, Okay, being dressed promiscuously does not warrant somebody trying to make a move on you unconsensually, Pearl. That really shows like a very fucked up view that she has. They've done studies already. They found that the more promiscuous a woman is dressed has no effect on whether or not she is more likely to face assault or abuse. Because abuse and assault occurs more so as an act of power 
and a secondary sexual crime rather than purely a sexual crime. It is a misunderstanding, a devastating misunderstanding that will lead to a bunch of wrong prescriptions, which is what Pearl is doing here. Or they'll say, um, they'll say they have trauma from the way men talk or like something at work traumatized them. Huh, yeah, I'm sure that that's all just pretend, you know? After all, you weren't just dismissing men doing locker room talk. So then they'll complain. Um, and then something is given to the women to make them happy. So either human resources or they'll get money from a lawsuit. So yep, that's it, guys. Human resources, man. Women, they're complaining about trauma. And then human resources was implemented. That's what happened, you know? A woman whined, human resources showed up just like that there's there's nothing else to do except make sarcastic comments like she she's just she's just rambling and then trying to illustrate as well i don't know which is more embarrassing oh my message to women is if you want to go in the guys spaces if you want to go into the bars if you want to go into work if you want to go into all these men's spaces i, I have no problem with that but what I do have a problem with is you going into the men's spaces and then whining about the way men talk and suing them later. That's my issue. Um, and so we really need to- So you can't just sue somebody and like get money. You would have to actually have a case. You realize that, right? Like you can't just sue somebody because a man said something that made you upset or something. Oh, the joy is to be a woman. All you need, okay, is to just be a woman and complain and the nearest court will give you money from some kind of a lawsuit. In fact, if you're a woman, you can literally just walk into any store and complain and file a lawsuit and then win at least $20,000. It's amazing. Publicly shame these women. I'm so tired of these women that are five sixes at best saying how everybody's trying to sleep with them. Oh my God. Man. Oh, she's so, she's so lost. Oh, this poor lost retarded lamb. Oh, it's like watching a, a dying sheep bleed through a corn maze for the final moments of its life oh you poor thing you need a shepherd you need you need a hospice nurse I, I don't really know what to say like obviously a woman's appearance doesn't really play that much role in um having unwanted advances made on you now it might be true that if you are a really really hot girl maybe you'll get you'll uh you're more likely to get catcalled or anything but like this is ridiculous this notion that you couldn't have been sexually harassed because you're not cute enough, you're not hot enough, is such a fucked up way to view this issue that you don't even realize how that leads to just blaming women almost. So she has to be lying because she's not cute enough, but then what if she wears something kind of slutty, right? Is she cute enough now? Now if she claims, now what's gonna happen? Now she's maybe a nine to you, Pearl, okay? Now she says, everybody's trying to F me. And then what are you gonna say? Well, you're just trying to dress slutty, aren't you? Ha, huh, maybe you should just try covering up, bitch. And then what happens when she does that? You couldn't have been harassed. You're only a five or a six, bitch. She is creating a fucking warped, like world almost, in which there is no way that the woman can ever win. Whether or not, a girl is a victorious secret model or not doesn't matter when it comes to their risk of being abused and the validity of their claims that they were abused. Again, I don't think that if someone just says they were harassed, that means you should immediately demonize the man. But I do think that your immediate reaction should first be one of empathy and sympathy and understanding and not one of you're too ugly to have that happen. Not to mention, last but not least, Pearl, you talk all the time about how men are naturally wanting to go out and fuck all the time. They just want to fuck, fuck, fuck. You know, that's why men shouldn't be exclusive, all this shit. So are you really that surprised that a man or multiple men wouldn't be trying to fuck a girl that you would rate a five or a six? Like, even within her own disgusting sexist narrative that she's constructed, it's contradictory, which is why she is either an immaculate grifter or she is the dumbest person on earth and somehow has made it this far. Ma'am, you gotta at least be an eight for that. And it's true because a lot of times yeah, when we say she's this- she's just doing that. This is why whether you're dressed promiscuous or not, whether you're young or old, or whether you're a four or a nine, according to Pearl, there is a risk there. And that's why it's important to understand this kind of crime 
and understand what motivates it. Because if you don't, then you slip into this shit. Then you slip into the, well, maybe if you weren't so cute, guys wouldn't be harassing you. Because you see, uh, guys are mindless penis machines and they see a hot woman and similar to how cartoon characters used to smell a pie and start floating towards it. Well, they open their mouth drooling and then start floating towards your boobies. Okay, they can't help it. It's up to you, ladies. Cover that shit up. Like, it's actually the most low-grade view of men also when you take this approach. And that's another thing that's really, really interesting because she tries to take this I care about the men crap all the time, but her viewpoints require that you view men as these mindless fucking machines who have no self-control whatsoever. It's women base things off of how we feel. So if a woman feels they were trying to do that, then essentially they were. And we just have this tendency to blow things out of proportion. And it's really not even our fault. It's just how we are. But the problem it's is- It's just how we are, man. Woohoo! Yep. <laughs> Women, man, they always have, it's just, I tell you, every time a woman is sexually harassed and assaulted, they just, they always blow it out of proportion, you know? It's not like it's a, a literal crime or anything. Out of proportion. And it's really not even our fault. It's just how we are. But the problem is, problem is we've lied to women and men about the way women are. Yeah, so my, my final thought is women's, please stop going into the men's spaces and complaining about the way men are. And stop dressing half naked and not expecting men to hit on you at work. At work. Okay, so deliberately sexual harassment at work. Okay, that's what she is saying right now. She's actually defending sexual harassment at work. Dude, this is just easy content for me. Come on. Come on. Who's funding this? <laughs> Dude, she wants to set us back so far. Could you imagine this? Brenda, maybe if you decided to wear pantyhose with that skirt... <laughs> then I wouldn't have felt the need to grab your ass. You ever think about that one, bitch? No, of course not. Selfish hoe, get out of the men's spaces. <laughs> it's li literally her video summarized. <laughs> um, I think we can all agree on this. But let me know what you guys think. Maybe Pearl's crazy. All of these opinions are, are opinions, nonetheless. Uh, they're just opinions, guys. Just opinions, okay? I promise. I love, by the way, when people do that, when they say it's just my opinion as like a defense thing. Like that doesn't... Honey, that doesn't make it any better. You're just acknowledging that your opinion is this fucking dumb. That's, that's bad, man. Just having an opinion does not give you a pass. That's another common conservative argument as well, that it's just an opinion. They'll say things like that a lot too. It used to be the opinion, just my, just, just their opinion that black people should still be slaves. That used to be an opinion too, you know? And that was a wrong opinion. And your opinion, Pearl, is not only wrong, it is actually so incredibly harmful and detrimental for women everywhere, it's not even funny. So think about it this way, right? What does she complain about a lot too about women? Women being hypergamous, meaning that women want to always go for the highest status man, the wealthiest, the best looking, those kind of things, right? That's what she says that women are like, and she'll bring this up as a bad thing. But yet at the same time, get rid of HR, women shouldn't care if they're being sexually harassed at the workplace. Well, what if they do? And then they leave. What if they leave that job then? Now, what if it's really getting difficult for them to find work where they're not being subjected to harassment and now they have nowhere to go to really report that? So maybe they just don't have a job. Well, now what are they going to do? Well, they're going to need someone to support them, right? So wouldn't it actually make sense, Pearl, for that woman to go for the guy of the highest status? Isn't your argument, your narrative contributing to women being hypergamous? You're literally making the problem worse, complaining about the problem, and profiting from the problem. And that's what these dumb motherfucking cunts do all the fucking time. Pearl specifically. Contribute, contribute, contribute to the issue, and she gets to profit right back from it. It's some of the most disingenuous, degenerate type of behavior. And again, this is why I call just pearly things, just pick me things. Because you are either brain dead, you're either a dumb cunt, or you are just desperate to be picked by the guys and seen as the good one. Probably you're a pack of all three and definitely daddy issues. But regardless, just pearly things, I need to stop watching your content for a bit because it's not worth getting this mad. Sometimes it's like the, the blatant stupidity just sets me off. <laughs> uh, okay, bye Pearl. Next time you're driving home in Minecraft, please be very, very careful not to do your makeup when going over a really high bridge getting work done on its railing.